Oregonians enjoy quality of life. But all of this is at risk from global warming. For the past 400,000 years, carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere have shifted constantly, but have never been above 300 parts per million. Global temperatures have risen and fallen, corresponding nearly perfectly with CO2 levels. After the Industrial Revolution, CO2 levels skyrocketed, along with rising global temperatures. Today, CO2 levels are higher than 400 parts per million and are causing climate disruption. 97% of climate scientists say that humans' dependence on fossil fuels is the problem. Whether you call it climate change or global warming, they are clear on what we must do. We must transition from fossil fuels to clean energy in the very near future. Today, we are paying the price for our use of fossil fuels with climate change in Oregon. Oregon has a history of drought. But scientists say that global warming is making drought longer and more intense. Drought reduces summer water flows. People, wildlife, farmers, ranchers, businesses, and recreation must now compete for dwindling water. Clearly, as the planet warms, it will result in changed weather patterns, more drought cycles, higher water temperatures, and that will have an impact on fish populations. And some of those iconic species in the Pacific Northwest, the salmon species, steelhead and trout, are cold water dependent species. To some degree, those populations have adapted to periodic drought periods but as those periods become more pronounced and more prolonged, their ability to adapt to a change in environment quickly will be beyond their limits. Salmon, our food, our recreation, and a $6.7 billion industry. Climate change has really affected our mountain. Not only does it affect our employees, but it affects all the winter recreation businesses um, in our town. People are not lodging anymore. They're not going to the restaurants. It seems that more rain is falling than snow. And um, it's pretty scary. We, we will get rainstorms that go for days and basically floods out our mountain. It's sad because it, it affects people's livelihoods and just, I think, their health and their lifestyle. I mean, it's it can be really depressing for people when they don't get to do what they're passionate about. Wildfire is a natural part of the forest, but what we are seeing now is not natural. Increasing wildfires, along with smoke-filled air, affects our health and safety. Children, the elderly, outdoor workers, and people with respiratory problems are especially vulnerable. Climate change drives longer fire seasons. Uh, and when you have longer fire seasons, combined with fuel accumulation, we have more and larger and more severe fires. Um, and we're getting fire during times of years and in locations where, where we've never seen it before. The fire community has coined the term megafires, and they, they defy uh, our ability to, to control them. Uh, some of the sizes of these fires in the four and five and 600,000 acres, completely new records. It's the smoke level in Sisters during the Pole Creek fire, off the chart. The equipment has to be reworked. So I think this is the wake-up call for you know, what we're going to have on the on the horizon. If we choose to do nothing, we will pay for our dependence on fossil fuels with polluted air, fewer jobs, water shortages, and damages from extreme fire, flooding, and drought. The fossil fuel industry wants us to do nothing. They buy scientists to deny climate change. Go to www.daysmogblog.com 
to see who is being paid to spread misinformation. Let's open up the window of opportunity. Act today to transition from fossil fuels to clean energy. It's the right thing to do, not only for ourselves, but for future generations. Citizens can vote for effective climate policies and lawmakers that support them. Citizens of British Columbia voted for a carbon tax several years ago. They continue to reduce emissions and create jobs without negative effect to the economy. BC has the lowest taxes for individuals and businesses in North America. China leads a list of 73 countries, 22 states, provinces, and cities that support carbon pricing. California has cap and trade. By pricing carbon, they are investing billions in clean energy and low carbon jobs. This shows that cutting carbon emissions can be done affordably while growing the economy. Everyone can reduce energy use and adapt to clean energy. Grassroots leaders can build awareness and influence others. No one person can do everything, but everyone can do something. Thank you.